number 11, Julie Ann Genta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order. My question. Order. I've asked the member to cooperate, I think, two or three times now. If the member is going to refuse to cooperate, unfortunately, I'll have to ask you to leave the chamber. Julie Ann Genta, question number 11. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Transport. Is he confident that all transport investment decisions by his government are best value for money, reliability and reducing climate pollution? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Simon Mr Richard. Speaker, yes, in the context that they were made, investment decisions need to balance many factors, such as value for money, reliability, the environment and resilience. I'm confident that the transport investment decisions made by this government represent an appropriate balance of those factors. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Will he order an immediate independent review of KiwiRail's decision to purchase new diesel trains in light of leaked reports stating that refurbishing the existing electric trains would be $230 million cheaper and that diesels purchased to date have been extremely poor performance and have a high failure rate? The Honourable Simon oh, Mr Speaker, as much as the member says there that it's uh, simply incorrect, no, I won't be uh, ordering a review. No, no, old data. Point of order. Point of order, Julie Ann Genta. I seek leave to table an independent review by Worley Parsons provided to KiwiRail that has not been made publicly available that raises serious concerns about the cost and reliability of diesel train replacements. Leave, leave a sort to table that particular review paper. Is there any objection to being tabled? There is objection. Further sub order. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Is the minister seriously not concerned that an independent review concluded that KiwiRail's advice to its board was quote unquote biased towards the diesel train option? The Honourable uh, Simon Bridges. Mr Speaker, no, because the uh, report that you're talking about is now out of date, been superseded by much better information inputs. But I think what that shows, actually, is that KiwiRail took a very long time to come to this difficult decision. They balanced the factors, as I said, and uh, I'm not revisiting their decision. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julie and Gentle. If that report has indeed been superseded by better information, why did he and his cabinet colleagues receive a Treasury briefing the day before this decision was made public, which said Treasury officials were not confident that the actual cost of the decision is clear in the material provided? The Honourable Simon Bridges. Oh, I must speak because we often receive briefings. <laughs> Supplementary question? Uh, point of order. Point of order, Julia and Genda. Mr. Speaker, uh, my question was pretty specific, and oh, it was... On this occasion, I invite the member to go back and look at the question, and when he, she looks at the question, she'll see that it has been addressed by the Minister. Sharpen up the supplementary um, question. Mr. Speaker, my question... Order. I've dealt, with that. Order. I've dealt with that matter. If the member has a further supplementary, we'll hear it. Otherwise, we're moving on. Point supplementary question? Point of order. Point of order. Julie Ann Genton. I seek leave to table a Treasury briefing two ministers obtained under the OIA showing Treasury raised concerns a day before the decision was made public that the cost of the decision Order. was unclear. I don't need any further leave a sort to table that particular Treasury briefing. Is there any objection to being tabled? Yep, it is. It is. Supplementary? Yeah. Supplementary? S supplementary question, Julie Ann Genton. If the minister is so confident, can he provide any evidence to counter the conclusions of these independent and internal reports showing that new diesel trains will cost more and are less reliable than electric? The Honourable Simon Bridges. Mr Speaker, yes, I can. I mean, ultimately, there are many reports, but uh, they all culminated uh, across, I think it was about two years, in a business case. And in short, the business case made quite clear that the status quo was more cost-effective, actually much more cost-effective, that the change would have been hugely disruptive to the KiwiRail business and its customers, result in loss of customers, quite probably, and that actually uh, the status quo in terms of not seeing those uh, uh, freight uh, go on the roads, uh, resulted in fewer emissions uh, than, than that would have been the case. Question number 12, Dr Jan Yang. Mr Speaker, my